China launched a propaganda war, taking advantage of the Israel-Palestine conflict, saying China is the savior of the world's Muslims. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Eleven days of fighting between Israeli and Palestinian forces ended on Friday with a ceasefire. It had been the worst violence there since 2014. But every heartbreaking conflict is also a great opportunity for a Chinese communist propaganda drive. You might be arguing with people over who the real bad guy is in this long-standing conflict. Israel? Hamas? No. The real bad guy is America. During the fighting, Chinese state-run media came out with article after article about how the U.S. is part of the problem, but not part of the solution. The U.S. stands opposite to international justice, and the U.S. is the one really harming the world's Muslims. The Israel-Palestinian conflict has been a godsend for the Communist Party. International pressure has been mounting on the Chinese regime for its genocide of Uyghur Muslims in Xinjiang. But with the recent fighting in Israel and Gaza, the Communist Party can now use one of its favorite propaganda tactics, the old switcheroo. You see, the U.S. is overconcerned about Muslim Uyghurs, but what about Muslim Palestinians? Get a load of this. State-run China Daily says the U.S. is pretending to be friends and well-wishers of Muslims, but they have been caught red-handed this time because they are clamoring for the human rights of Muslims in China, but quite silent about the killing of Muslims in Palestine. Thus, their hypocrisies have been revealed to the world once again. Wait, does that also mean China is being hypocritical by saying they care about the Muslims in Palestine, but not about the Muslims in Xinjiang? Of course not, because what the U.S. claims is happening in Xinjiang are all lies. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Hua Chunyin said the U.S. joined with a few of its allies and attempted to organize meaningless meetings on Xinjiang-related issues based on lies and political prejudice. Because the reality is human rights in Xinjiang are great. There's an economic boom. Granted, the economic boom is mostly felt by the Han Chinese people that have flooded Xinjiang in recent years, displacing the Uyghurs. But what's important to remember is, look at all the happy ethnic dancing. Clearly, China is the real friend of the world's Muslims. Muslims are well aware that the U.S. allies are pretending to come out as their friends by shedding crocodile tears for Uyghurs in Xinjiang. Muslims think that the U.S. is using the Xinjiang issue as a shield to hide their long history of oppression in Muslim countries. Since actions certainly speak louder than words, Muslims know who are their genuine and bona fide friends around the world. It's China. China is their bona fide friend. Which is why it's so evil that the U.S. has been pressuring Arab countries to criticize China's human rights and sabotaging the China-proposed Belt and Road Initiative. Yes, please ignore whatever the U.S. says about China's genocide of Muslims and continue to do business with China. Which is why the state-run Global Times suggests that only human rights views of developing countries, such as China, should be more listened to. And you know, since you asked, the Chinese Communist Party does have some ideas about how to solve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. I'll tell you what they are after the break. Welcome back. Yesterday's ceasefire was brokered largely by Egypt, which I can't understand. After all, China had also offered to help. But don't worry, because there will be more conflict in the region at some point. And then, the Israelis and Palestinians can turn to China. Because China knows all about how to create peace and harmony. For example, China said, to avoid a humanitarian catastrophe, Israel must fulfill its obligations proposed by relevant UN resolutions, completely lift its lockdown in the Gaza Strip, ensure the safety and legal rights of Palestinians in the occupied territories, and facilitate the entrance of humanitarian assistance. You know, like China does in Xinjiang. Or would if there was actually a problem there, but there isn't, so there's no need. China is also suggesting a two-state solution. 
What a great idea. Why hasn't anyone thought of that before? Oh wait, they did. And the Palestinian side repeatedly said no. But the important thing is, China doesn't need to offer actual solutions. They just need to seem like they're the rational good guy, while making the U.S. look like the bad guy. The reason China supports a two-state solution is because that's been the UN's stance. A very unsuccessful stance, but that doesn't matter. The Communist Party likes to pretend it's a responsible, international player by saying, oh yeah, we totally follow the UN, especially because China has tremendous control over the UN and can stop it from, say, criticizing what China is doing in Xinjiang. Meanwhile, Chinese state-run media has used the Israel-Palestine conflict to criticize the U.S. for being on the opposite side of international justice. And the Chinese Communist Party is also taking advantage of political divisions in the U.S. It blamed the crisis on both Trump and Biden. It's Trump's fault because what Trump did in the past years has sowed the seeds for the current conflicts and bloodshed. So if you're on the left in the U.S., you might agree Trump is a monster. But it's also Biden's fault because Biden is unlikely to make any concrete moves in de-escalating the confrontation. At most, making certain gestures in diplomatic language that do not mean anything. So if you're on the right in the U.S., you might agree. Biden is a weak, ineffectual president. The Chinese Communist Party really knows how to play us. Of course, I wouldn't want you to think China is just blaming the U.S. They're also blaming the Jews. You see, spokesperson Hua Chunying says this conflict is intertwined with the Iran nuclear issue. So Chinese state-run media say Israel doesn't want to see the U.S. and Iran reach a deal, so the conflict in Gaza will add difficulties to the talks between the U.S. and Iran. You see, Israel has a secret plot to muck up the U.S.-Iran deal, which is why they got Hamas to fire rockets at them so they could fire back. And if that sounds like a crazy conspiracy theory, listen to this. The U.S. bore undeniable responsibility because its policy in the Middle East has long been kidnapped by its Jewish community that serves the interest of Israel. That's right, Chinese state-run media is blaming the current conflict on a cabal of Jews controlling the U.S. government. Israel has been criticizing blatant anti-Semitism in Chinese state-run media. A recent Chinese state-run CGTN broadcast questioned what was really behind U.S. support for Israel. The host said, Some people believe that U.S. pro-Israeli policy is traceable to the influence of wealthy Jews in the U.S. and the Jewish lobby on U.S. foreign policymakers. Jews dominate finance and internet sectors. So do they have the powerful lobbies, some say? Possible. Stay classy, Chinese state-run media. And now it's time for me to answer a question from a member of the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. Fans who support us and our efforts to expose the truth about the Chinese Communist Party on the crowdfunding website Patreon. Jason O'Ring asks, Question. Has the CCP done or said anything about moving the Great Firewall of China so that it covers Hong Kong as well? That's an excellent question. For those of you who don't know, the Great Firewall is essentially the massive censorship apparatus the Chinese Communist Party uses to cut China off from the global internet and control what people in China can see online. Now, ever since the Chinese Communist Party implemented the Hong Kong National Security Law, Hong Kong's freedoms have increasingly been restricted. Protesters have been arrested for holding up blank pieces of white paper. Hong Kong legislators need to make patriotic oaths to the Communist Party. Reporters are attacked in broad daylight. Many are concerned it's just a matter of time before the Great Firewall comes to Hong Kong. Technically, Hong Kong still has freedom of speech in the press. But new fake news laws have a lot of people worried about press freedom. And earlier this year, a pro-democracy website was blocked, which got a lot of people thinking about the Great Firewall. Last year, the Hong Kong government enabled police to censor online speech and force internet service providers to hand over user information and shut down platforms. So really, it's only a matter of when, not if, the Great Firewall comes to Hong Kong. Thanks for your question, Jason, and your support. And a big thank you to everyone who supports China Uncensored on Patreon. 
We could not do this show without you. So thank you for joining us in the fight to expose the Chinese Communist Party to the world. If you're interested in joining, head over to patreon.com slash China Uncensored. You'll get a bunch of cool perks, including the chance to have me answer your question on the show. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.